Hey guys, today's video is going to be a fun tech tip type video. So I bought a bunch of these son of basic switches. Now this is a switch, very inexpensive. Uh, it costs around 100 Rand, which I think if you divert that into dollars, it's probably probably about five dollars, three to five dollars that you're going to pay for this unit. Um, and what's nice about this is you connect it to their own application, which then allows you to link this to your Google Home or Alexa or any one of the smart applications um, to be able to automate your home. I bought four of these not thinking that this probably won't work to open my garage door. The the two, two of them was really intended to open the garage door and as well as the motor gate. And after I bought them when I got home, I realized I wasn't quite thinking because the basic switch itself has an input and an output. And this is intended to switch on and off remotely or on a schedule or something like that the power that you put into this unit now it powers itself also from the current that you stick into here so you can go anything anywhere from 110 volts in the usa to 220 volts in most rest of the world um, and it will power on this unit and it's permanently connected to the wi-fi and then it will switch on and off whatever sits on the other side over here so a light, a kettle, um, anything that you can really think about. But what it will not do, which I didn't think about, is that quick short circuit type trigger that I'm looking for to open the garage or open the gate or even um, um, activate or deactivate my alarm system for that matter. Let's quickly look at the unit. Um, the screws are out by default. It comes like this and you can just pry it open. And then that's the that's the inside of the little unit and it's it's a fairly simple construction when you think about it really what you have is you've got the input side over here which goes without any circuitry directly to that little cable and you follow it across it goes to the same output side on this side so the um, the neutral wire is not switched at all it's a direct through connection whereas the live wire which is on the other side over there is switched through this little relay because obviously these um, components over here will not be able to handle the 10 amps or 2000 watts that this Oki is actually rated for so hence the use of the relay over here to be able to switch up to 10 amps of power now we're going to use that in later software, these guys shipped with an, something called an inching mode where it will trigger whatever you are triggering for a period of time. Now that's anything from I think 0.5 seconds up to 10 seconds. Don't quote me on that. I will need to go and check up on that. But for the purpose of this video and opening the garage door, what we're going to do is, is we're going to use the inching mode to be able to switch on this little relay for 0.5 seconds and what we're going to do is, is we're going to rewire this this um, circuitry and repurpose that relay so that when we do that it effectively creates a short circuit on the far side of here so we're going to disconnect the input from the output and when this relay switches it's just going to do a short circuit across these two pins over here which will then open the garage door for us and with that we will have a wireless voice controlled garage door opening solution for five bucks the first thing that we really want to do is and remember this is the input side this is the output side so from the input side this wire that i showed you here which just really connects the input directly to the output over there the neutral wire we're going to use a sol soldering iron and take it out of its original position over there then what we're going to do is, is we're going to drill a very small hole in the corner over here for that wire to stick through so that we can re-solder it 
on this pin over here. So let me see if I can show you that very clearly. So little hole at the end of the slit over there, come through and connect over there. But before we can do that, I need to use my Dremel tool to cut off the, um, the circuit over here. So obviously they're using both pins of the relay to switch across to the, um, to the other side. But we want to we want to disconnect that. We we don't want that to connect anywhere close to the um, to the other inputs, the live input that we've got coming into the, over there. Although I mean it's on the wrong side of the board, it really won't make a difference. It won't make a short or anything like that. But it's best just to disconnect it completely. I'm going to quickly go and do that, and then I'll come and show you guys the result. Once you've removed the wire from the side, and you want to cut on the other side of the board over here. You really want to cut as close to this pin as you possibly can with the thinnest wheel that you've got for your Dremel tool. And the reason for that is on the other side you have this little resistor and it can very easily be a victim if you cut too close to it and, and you'll cut off that. Now what that okay does, what the what the resistor does, is it goes from the live over here and switches the the relay on and off. So you very, very definitely do not want to damage that particular point. So be very careful when you do cut here. Get as close as possible to this side um, so that you don't accidentally remove the resistor. This is sort of the result you're looking for. Um, we've taken the wire off, drilled a hole through the little board, soldered it back onto that pin as indicated, and we've cut off completely all the way through the board because this is a double-sided PC board. So there are tracks running at both sides. So we cut all the way through the board to make sure that there's no continuity. And to confirm that, you can use your continuity tester to just check that there's no continuity there. Right, now for the next step, we need to take this guy and wire it up to 220 volts of electricity so that we can check that we're getting the short circuit switch function that we're looking for. Right, so with this guy now wired up to electricity as if it was in circuit, first thing we want to do, make sure that we don't have any continuity on our two output pins here. Absolutely nothing, right? The next thing we want to do is to make sure that we've got no voltage coming out on this side. So again, connect that, no voltage whatsoever, right? Now you can see that it's flashing there because it's looking to be linked to its application. So we mentioned previously the EW EW link application and we're going to press and hold this button until it starts flashing fast. There's a nice solid fast flash. We're going to add a device. Make sure that you're on the wireless that you want to connect this thing with and um, you have to put in your password for the wireless here already. It seems to be communicating with our little smart switch over there and it will do the necessary to link it to the internet. Right, once it's paired it's going to ask you to give the device a name. Um, I'm going to call this garage door. And the room I'm going to add it to is other, garage door and other, because I would like to create the room called garage. And there you go. Right. And now we can try it to see if it works. There it switches. I'm going to check for continuity. Okay, so it works. The next thing we need to do now 
is enable the inching feature so that it switches for a half a second or whatever and then switches off again. So we need to do that inside the software over here. Okay, so to set up the inching, what I do is I go into the actual device and then you'll see there's a notification at the top of here that says that there's new firmware available for this unit. So if I go into the three dots over here, you'll see at the top it says current version 2.9 and there's a version 3.1 or 3.4 available for it. So I'm just going to update the firmware real quickly before we go down to the inching setting which is on that same, same page. With that done, you can now see that the current version of the software is 3.4.1 which is the latest version and I can scroll down to the bottom over here where it says inching settings and I can tell it to inch for 0.5 seconds so I'm going to enable the inching function over there and just to show you you can do lots of time up to very long longer way longer than what we actually want um, I'm going to leave it at the 0.5 seconds of inching. All right, click save. And now it's enabled on the unit. Let's go see if that works. So with our continuity tester in place. Ta-da! Simple as that. Let's go to the garage door and show you how we're going to make that work on the garage door now. Right now up here at the garage motor, basically what we have, um, previously I installed a separate receiver for a different remote system that I use so that I can have um, the garage door, the gate, um, everything, uh, the alarm system all on the same remote system. And it basically connects to this here connector where I take out a positive and a negative to be able to run that unit. And then I do a short circuit from common to here to be able to open the garage door. So pretty much if I just take any piece of wire and I short circuit these two points over here, the garage door is going to open. So that's exactly what we're going to do when we take the Sonoff unit, which we've got here now and connect two wires into there. So we're just going to double up basically those two points with a wire going to this guy. And that's going to give us the same switching function when we use our EWLink application or a little bit later on the Google Home application in my case. Now just to prove to you that I'm not smoking my socks, I've gone ahead and wired these two just normal wires into the system there and they are going to wire up to our EWE link or our Sonoff unit over there and what I have on the far side here is just the two open pins and when I touch them just like this then the garage door will open and if I touch them again it will stop and again it will close okay so that's the basic effect that we want to achieve Right, and that's our two little wires wired into the little Sonoff unit over here. You can see the Sonoff unit is connected, a little green light over there. And now we can go and test it. Alrighty, and here we are, the final proof of the pudding. There's the app, there's the garage door. Click. Ta da! Click stop click close and for our final party trick hey Google activate the garage door okay turning on the garage door Ta -da.